How do you do, ladies and gentlemen, and boys and girls? I am Julius Sumner Miller, and physics is my business. And our very special business today is the subject of freely falling bodies and bodies which are projected, projectile motion. And I would remind you of things already learned in earlier lessons, such as, for example, a body of small mass, a body of enormous mass, released to fall freely, released simultaneously to fall freely. And what is their behavior? They fall at the same rate. And you remember, it is Newton's second law that tells us that. Namely, that F equals MA, or for freely falling bodies, W equals MJ. Now, what is the action of a body falling freely? Of course, it encounters in real life some viscosity and friction and trouble with the atmosphere. So what we can do is lodge a heavy body and a light one, say a coin and a piece of paper in a tube, and then with a vacuum pump, take out as much air as we can, and then do as follows, and we would see both bodies fall at the same rate. I had this tube originally evacuated, but there has been a leak, so the experiment, as some would say, has failed, but I remind you, I have not provided nature with her requirements to show the simultaneity of fall of both bodies in free space. Now, when we study a falling body, dropped so like that, we learn as follows. Suppose it starts right there. One second elapses, and we find it right there. How far has it fallen? 16 feet. Now we let another second elapse, and I'm not drawing this to scale. And how far would it fall in the second second? During the second second, it would fall 48 feet. Now let it fall for a third second. And how far would it fall during the third second? And we find 80 feet. And these numbers have some mathematical enchantment because 16 divided by 16, 48 divided by 16, 80 divided by 16, and we see that the numbers are the odd numbers beginning with unity, which is a discovery that Galileo made in the 16th century. Now, further than that, you see that first, the first two seconds is 64 feet, the first second is 16 feet, the first three seconds is 144 feet, and look at these numbers. 16. 16 into 64 is 4. That's 2 squared. 16 into 144 is 9. That's 3 squared. So the distances all fallen during the succeeding seconds are in the order 1, 3, uh, uh, 1, 4, 9. You see, 1, 4, 9. 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared. Now, when we study a freely falling body, it is too far to measure in real life. So what do we do? We have a machine which records a falling body and where it is every 60th of a second. And here is a tape which I have run, and the point to be noticed is that the distances as we go down increase in the order I have described, a discovery made by Galileo. Now, there is another exciting adventure regarding falling bodies. Another very exciting adventure. Suppose that I had a body A and a body B on the same horizontal level with respect to the ground. And what am I going to do? I'm going to allow A to fall freely, and B, I'm going to project horizontally, like that. Now, you know the path it takes is a parabola. Indeed, this was discovered also by Galileo in the 16th century. And the question that's enchanting is this. How about their times of arrival at the ground? The impulsive notion is, well, this is going much farther and hence should take longer. But that is not true. The time of fall for A to the ground and B to the ground are one and the same. Why? Because the horizontal velocity of B remains unaltered and the vertical velocity is taken care of by gravitational forces the same in both cases. And here we have an experiment, a demonstration to show that. Here is a device with a spring which permits me to shoot a ball horizontally, as in the case of D. And here is one that I can release to fall freely, as A in the picture. And we will rely on our senses, hearing and sight, to verify what happens. 
Watch it. Simultaneity of impact. Now, this is not a proof, but it is a suggestion of the reliability of the law of falling bodies and projectiles. Consider now another one. This one has absolute enchantment. <clears throat> Let me put a ball in a car on a spring. And now I will put the spring in compression, drive the car away from me. The spring will be released and project the ball vertically, and the car will go horizontally, and it does no longer have the ball in it. Pretty soon, the car is over here. And what do we discover? We discover an amazing and wonderful thing, that the ball is caught by the car. And I'm going to show you that. First, let us take a look at the mechanism. Here is the cart. There is the ball. And I have compressed the spring, and it is held by a pin below. So when I pull a string which releases the spring, the ball will be shot up. Let's get over to this table and take a look at it. I'll put something down out of the way here. Let us take a look at it. Watch now, watch. I am going to drive the car away. So, pull the pin, up goes the ball, the car keeps going, and zowie, the ball is caught by the car. Watch it now. There it is. Now, I did not go so very high, and perhaps I should do that again to show you what a wonderful thing it is to witness. Watch it, watch it. Oh, this is... There it is. And I say, this is enchanting to witness.